transport is a big talking point in Brighton and Hove. Issues like parking and traffic are hot topics of conversation. But how much of what we hear is true and how much is myth? We put some of the points people are making on the street to the man in charge of the roads, Councillor Ian Davey. Now we often hear it said that uh, bus and bike lanes are uh, a waste of public money and could be better spent on something else. Well, all the money for transport schemes is it comes from grants from central government and can only be spent on transport. Generally we get about five to six million pounds each year and we spend half of that on road maintenance and the other half goes, goes on, on, on new projects. But also over, over the last three or four years we've been immensely successful in bringing in extra funding. We've, we've, we've successfully won in competition with other local authorities about 25 million pounds for transport schemes across the city and, and that has paid, gone a, a long way to paying for many of the new projects projects such as the Lewis Road Scheme, the Vaujar Rotary and the Old Shoreham Road. Some people say that the bus and bike lanes simply slow other traffic down and cause traffic jams. Well we know that's not the case with, with the Lewis Road. Yeah, we've, we've got d detailed uh, surveys both before and after the, the, the changes went in on the Lewis Road and they, they show us that general traffic journey times between Falmer and the Olstein are almost identical to what they were before uh, and the only exception to that is rush hour traffic coming in where there's a slight increase of, of about a minute to the journey time over, over that long distance but we're confident that, that the changes we've just brought into the Vogue gyratory which will, with the new traffic signals which are synchronized uh, you know, over a greater distance will, will help improve those journey times for all, for all users. What about this charge that parking charges are putting off visitors and deterring businesses from coming here? Well, we know that's not the case. Visitor numbers are up year on year. The last year we had a full survey done. We had 11 million visitors in, in 2013, and, and that was up from 9 million for, from the last time we had those figures done, about 2009. So we know that more people are visiting. In 2014, for example, we know that more of those visitors stayed here, with, with overnight stays up by over 5%. So they're clearly not putting visitors off. More and more people are coming here. And businesses are doing well in this city. We're fourth highest across the country for the creation of new jobs. But of course all of, all of that puts a big demand on the road network in the city and we have to manage that demand and, and part of the parking strategy is to encourage those who are driving to park in some of those car parks on the edge of the city for example, edge of the city centre for example and that's why even just now we're about to reduce the prices in the Regency car park to encourage people to use that maybe than driving all the way you know, right into the city centre where we know there's more, there's more queues for traffic for car parking and there's more traffic jams and there's more pollution so parking surplus income, which is about 10 million, no, about 11 million pounds a year, has to be spent on transport and is spent on transport. And predominantly, about 10 and a half million a year is spent on free bus travel for older people. On 20 miles an hour, people are saying it's a nuisance, it doesn't work, and people are ignoring it. Well, we know that's not the case. So in our research from the Phase 1 area, which, which has been in for nearly two years now, we know that speeds are down on three quarters of the roads. We know that, that collisions are down by 17%. We know that casualties are down by 12%. And most importantly of all, serious casualties are down by 20%. So that shows us clearly that it, it is working. And you know, we are putting, the, putting the, speed limit, the 20 mile per hour speed limits in where people have asked for them. And so we know very clearly it's what people of this city want. Uh, and it's happening all over the country. It's not just here, from London to Birmingham, to Manchester, to Edinburgh, you know, big cities across the country, and then small villages as well. You have residents and are asking for the safer speeds because everybody wants the streets where they live to be safe. Some people say you've declared war on the motorist. Well, that's clearly not the case. We, you know, we recognise that, that cars and vehicles are key elements of transport in the city. We know that, that they're essential for many people. But we have to really recognise the reality. The road network was built in the Victorian times and really was not designed for the number of vehicles and the demand that we really that we see today. You know, for, for, for example, in the Brighton Centre was built in 1977 and the number of vehicles on, on the country's roads have doubled in that time from 17 to about 35 million. 
So we have to find, we have to be smarter. We have to be more intelligent about how we use that space. And, and that's why you know, the, 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 bus, you know, the, the popularity of the buses here is so important. You know, we've got more, you know, we, people in Brighton Hove make more best bus journeys than anywhere else in the country. We, we, you know, more and more people are choosing to cycle every year. And that, that's got, got to be good news, so it means that there's got to be more space available for, for those people who do need to use their cars and do need to use their vehicles.